So as what we've talked about thus far in this post comes with a couple factors that definitely promote such a storm in next week, including it even being perhaps white, producing snow, and even a little rain in there too. And so these factors really all coexist as one. We're going to talk about each factor. We're going to compare two models, the Canadian in front of us on the left and the GFS on the right. Some have very similar characteristics, some a little faster with the progression, others slower. And, of course, we even have a little deepening rather than the other. And, of course, we'll sit down. We'll discuss that very quickly here with you so we have a better understanding of what to watch for mid next week. So let me first highlight these three factors that we look at. Obviously, the first one on the Canadian and, of course, on the GFS, but we'll write on the Canadian here, we have that ridge. So it almost looks like more of a hill. And so when you have a steep ridge, normally on the east side you have a deep trough. And then there is where you have your energy and all of that ahead of it. And that's where our storm is most likely to be found. Uh, the GFS is the same way. It has the ridge up here rather steep. Then you have a trough on the east side. Not as deep as the CMC, and I'm going to explain what effect that has uh, on the storm and what it does. Uh, but both have the general overall pattern of that ridge and of that trough, and the energy is around there. So we know from right there and then that there is probably a storm a hinting uh, based off the guidance that we look at here. And with the cold air, with that trough, and as you've noticed, if you, of course, live in the east or the upper Midwest throughout, uh, it has been a very cold weekend. Cold air will be in range for mid next week, and so thus we not only watch for rain, but we also watch for snow. Now, the question that we all watch here at Geo Environmental Atmosphere is what really triggers this to be a steeper ridge, or rather one that backs away from that idea? And what we found is it is the west coast feature of energy, just off the west coast. And of course, on the CMC, we have it here. And, of course, we also have it here on the GFS. And so what I have found is we have our northern jet stream, which is positioned right about here. And so it depends really how much that northern jet stream taps into that feature. And if it does, it creates a more steeper ridge. And as we've talked about earlier, the steeper the ridge, the deeper the trough, and that energy can swirl a little better, produce a, a more sizable storm, bring in more colder air. And that's what, if you for you snow lovers are looking for, uh, then that's what you're obviously cheering for. So now that we have an idea that the trough is in importance because of the ridge and how amplified the ridge can get based off the West Coast feature, we also want to show you another lasting piece, and that's the subtropical jet. So what we have here now is this piece here that kind of underlays through Mexico and Texas. And so as the CMC, we do have the trough, and as we spoke, it's a little deeper than the GFS. You have your energy here, but here's this southern tropical stream. And so what that does is much earlier than the GFS is taps into the storm. So you have more of an extent of precipitation from the Gulf, from the Tennessee Valley, all the way into the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast. Snow and rain. I would say snow perhaps maybe starts on the CMC from the Tennessee Valley on northeastward. But what it does is taps much earlier. And that might even be why the trough is a little deeper. Now the GFS, on the contrary, is a bit different but still has the idea. You see that the subtropical stream is still down here. The trough is not as deep on the GFS. You have the energy. And what happens is once this, the majority of this energy is off the shoreline, uh, that's when it all begins to tap. So, again, it taps a little later than the Canadian. And so when that happens, you have more of your snow, uh, not as much for and back into the Tennessee Valley and those mountainous areas, but, of course, definitely more um, just mid-Atlantic, inland, and coastal. And that's what you'll see on some of these snow maps that we have in this post comparing the CMC and the GFS. But all really have the idea of snow. And so what we watch here is of those three factors we talk about. How steep is that ridge? That's going to determine how deep this trough gets. Now, how deep this trough gets can have very big uh, implications for the southern stream interaction. But if we're really trying to figure out how deep this trough gets based off how steep the ridge is, we need to look at this west coast feature. I think that is going to have 
a lot to do with how the storm pans out. So I hope this helps you guys understand more of what we're seeing here at Geo Environmental Atmosphere. This is post one of the storm. We'll have plenty more as the days roll out and as models begin to agree more. But for now, we're just going to show you some hypothetical maps and really the overall pattern and what we are looking at here on and in our organization. So for now, continue reading and we will have more posts out throughout the weekend and beginning your early next week.